Hello, we're going to do a quick overview of the integration service for Automation Cloud. When we look at the integration service, it's all about giving you flexibility and to provide a unified automation approach to both combining UI based automation, which UiPath is known for, but also for API based integration. And really, it's a matter of combining the best of those worlds to give you a choice on how you ultimately want to automate your processes. So what does the integration service offer? First and foremost, it's all about the connectors to be able to connect to more systems that you use every day so that you can expand that automation. And with that comes connections. So how do we create these connections, making it easy to use for that, whether it's simply signing through OAuth and your username and password or creating apps and be able to get those client ID and secrets or however those backend systems ultimately authenticate. We're going to be able to give you the ability to create these connections and share and reuse those across your automations. Once we have those connectors and connections, one of the key things is that to be able to provide you server side events. So to come in and create and author triggers. So to respond to things that happen within these systems. So let's say a new employee is added in Workday or a new opportunity is created in Salesforce. We'll be able to pull and monitor those events so that you don't have to build robots to do that for you. But we also want to simplify the design and how we use these integrations across our different designers. So whether you're using Studio X or uh, Studio, whether you're that citizen developer or an RPA developer, we want to give you that consistent approach and power of these integrations uh, across those different design services. And ultimately, we think this is going to lead to more flexible automation. There's really no right or wrong approach. It's really up to you to decide whether UI or API based integration is right for you and to be able to do that even uh, interchangeably within a given workflow. But then when you create all these different capabilities with the connectors and the integration service, all ultimately we have to provide security and governance so that way you can automate more with general reliability. So we look at an overall uh, view of the architecture, really integration and API based integration is something that's been part of UiPath for quite some times, but everything was wrapped up in that particular activity pack. So essentially with the integration service, we've abstracted that logic into the actual service where that's where the connector logic lives. That's where we're going to be handling the authentication for you. So what does that really do? First, it simplifies the design time experience. So you'll see a lot of different new uh, connectors or activity packs uh, dedicated to the integration service. And this will allow you to reuse or use those connections that you've established on the server side. So I don't have to go ahead and re-authenticate every single time I want to use an automation across different processes. It really helps centralize the connection management of this. But then when we execute these and have them publish them for the robots to run, uh, all of that logic is really going to be run server side within the integration service. So it simplifies the logic and the execution of the robot. That robot's really just going to be talking to the integration service. And the integration service is the one that's going to be making those outbound API calls, using those uh, shared connections uh, to be able to manage and execute that overall process. Now let's give you a quick tour of this integration service. When you go to Automation Cloud, you'll notice that on the left-hand side, you'll see Integration Service. When you click that, the first thing you'll see is a list of connectors that UiPath has. And again, this is something that we're adding to every single month. But one of the things that we need to do to, in order to use one of these connectors is first to be able to connect or authenticate against that line of business system. So in this example, we'll just use something like Salesforce. So I'm going to type in Salesforce. And you'll see here we've got two different connectors, one for uh, Salesforce CRM and Service Cloud, and the other one for Marketing Cloud. But the one we're going to use today is, is for Salesforce. So I'm going to click that. And right now it shows me that I have no connections. So let's go ahead and get connected to my instance of Salesforce. So I'm going to click on Add Connection. And based on the connector, uh, oftentimes we will create a UiPath app to make it, you know, the authentication simplified for it, but not necessarily every connector will offer that. And sometimes you'll need to provide a client ID and secret or the uh, associated authentication type in order to get connected for that particular connector. So in this case for Salesforce, I'm going to use my production environment and we're going to set connect. And it's now going to redirect me to log in uh, with my uh, Salesforce account. And I've got a, an instance here that I'm going to go ahead and use. I'm going to click that. And now it's going to ask me uh, the, essentially the scopes that I need for this particular access. So we're going to go ahead and say allow here. 
And then once that's done, I'll be redirected back to the integration service. And then we'll see a new connection that has been added that now I can use within my automation. Now that I have this new connection, there's now a couple of things I can do with it. One, I can obviously use it within my automation and use those new integration service activity packs. And we'll show that in a moment. But another thing I can do is come in and go ahead and manage or create new triggers. Now, we'll go ahead and click on this and this will uh, come to a trigger screen where I can come in and add one or more triggers against a given connector. But before we do that, let's kind of take a look at the workflow that we want to trigger in the first place. This particular workflow is responsible for managing orders. So let's say we're using Salesforce and Salesforce, we have an order entry and based on a certain status of that order, we want to be able to trigger this particular workflow to start and then use a series of activity packs to go and fetch the order details, which is what we're doing here, uh, and then go ahead and insert them into ServiceNow because these orders are really around service requests. And so we want to create new service requests into ServiceNow. So when we look at some of these activity packs, you'll see on the left-hand side, uh, an, a category called integration service. And I just happen to have a few installed here. There's definitely more in the catalog that we talked about earlier. But for Salesforce, uh, you'll see some common different patterns here. Uh, some as an example where we'll have, you know, CRUD-based operations where we can do, you know, crates and lists, uh, be able to search for records on certain pieces, and then be able to update. And in some cases, let's say a JIRA, we may have you know, curated activities based on commonly used items uh, to be able to do that. So you'll have a couple of different uh, patterns here, like these curated activities to be able to invoke operation, which is more of a generic uh, API piece to be able to unlock generalized capability or methods against a line of business system, as well as just CRUD based on, uh, on objects as well. All right, so if we, we take a look at this, you know, we uh, we want to go ahead and start this particular workflow from the trigger that happened. And one thing to keep in mind is that you will have this, uh, you'll need to have a particular input argument of UiPath event object ID. So when we can uh, configure that particular trigger, uh, this is where it will uh, pass in the, let's say the order ID into this workflow. So that way this workflow will have context in terms of uh, what order that needs to be processed here. All right, so once I have that, I can come in and let's say use our Salesforce activity. And if I can configure this, one of the nice things about the integration service is that I don't have to put in my connection information in my scope activity. All my connection is, is really managed within here. So as you saw earlier, we created that connection. And since it was my default, it's go ahead and picking it up automatically right here. So I'll go ahead and save that. And now I can, what I wanna do is fetch the record, in this case, the order information based on the ID that is being passed in. So here I'm fetching this particular order information where I'm passing in, again, that input argument, which is being passed in from my trigger. And I could just simply pass it into this get record, grab the order information and grab any additional order or information that I might need. So here I can add, you know, perhaps other properties in this. Maybe I want the, uh, the bill to contact or perhaps the billing country, because uh, maybe I want to use that, you know, further down in my process based on some rules. So again, when we look at these activity packs and these corresponding connectors, this is where we can really, you know, use all the different methods and properties that are available to me against that overall API without really even writing code here. All right, so once I have um, my Salesforce information, that order information, now I wanna go ahead and uh, create a service request within ServiceNow. Now I've already created a connection for ServiceNow and it's already detected that and picked this up. And from here, if I go in and say insert record, if I go ahead and configure this, this is where we're creating a new incident to go ahead and uh, uh, to be able to create a, uh, a service request for that particular Salesforce order. All right, and now once that's done, I'm not gonna go too much more into the process, but this is where we are uh, grabbing the, the PO uh, information and some PDFs related to that purchase order, and then go ahead and sending that, uh, that PO out uh, for, for notification. Great, so I have my process here. Go back to my, my trigger. So let's go ahead and add a trigger. And since we're already within that Salesforce screen and already selected my connector, uh, it will detect if I already have a connection. And if so, it'll pick up that default connection. If not, I can simply just add a new connection here. And then from at this point, we can come in and say, what event do we wanna have? Do we wanna raise uh, based on an existing event or perhaps when a new record is created? 
Uh, in this example, I want to say when it's, uh, the record has been updated. And that record in question here will be really around that order. So if, and if I type order, and so we'll say, great, uh, this trigger will now fire when uh, uh, order is uh, updated. And now I can select the process. So here is that desk part assembly process that I was just showing you a moment ago. And, and this is where I can come in and select, you know, where I perhaps want this robot to run. Again, whether it's uh, uh, unattended or perhaps serverless here. And you'll notice that it will then read the input arguments that are available in that workflow. Okay, so when I select that process, it noticed that this is the uh, 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 input argument that was available. And that's exactly how it's going to work. It'll pass this order ID into that argument. So that way that workflow uh, can start with the right context. All right, so we'll go ahead and add this trigger. All right, so now within my Salesforce connector, I now have a new connector available to me. Well, that was a quick tour of the integration service. Hopefully you've gotten a lot out of this and uh, any questions, just let us know. Thanks so much.